I'm Mr. Moore. I'm your welding instructor at the high school. And today I wanted to speak with you a little bit about our PPE or personal protective equipment. In a welding shop, you're going to have specific pieces of equipment for safety that doesn't really pertain to maybe any other shop class you have. So I brought some examples of things that you're going to need. And we're going to start with how I consider important. First of all, your eyes. Your eyes are very important. And uh, let me say this. If I lose a finger, I don't like it. It disables me a little bit, but I can still function. If you lose your eyes, you're, you're just at a disadvantage every way you go if you can't see. So first and foremost, we always protect our eyes. And we do that with just plain old Z87 safety glasses. Now, I have my corrective ones on, but let me just stick these on. That's it. These protect me from the side from the top and the bottom. They are designed to cut around my face like so. So nothing can get under there. It can get under there, but not easily. Remember our safety glasses. We do furnish you safety glasses. Now some of this personal protective equipment, the school or the program will furnish. Some you have to furnish. So I'm gonna go through that and show you what you will be expected to furnish and what we will. This is our common welding hood or sometimes known as a helmet. It protects you from the ultraviolet razors, two kinds of ultraviolet razors, blue and red. This very same thing the sun puts out. And in saying that, some people are more sensitive to sunlight than others, aren't they? Well, the same pertains into welding. If you are, if you're light skinned with blue eyes, you're going to be a little more sensitive to ultraviolet rays than say somebody like myself who's a little bit darker skin, darker eyes. So if you'll look right here, you've got what's called a filter lens in this hood. What that does is when the light goes through the ultraviolet light, it spreads it out, disables it, pretty much takes it away and all you see is a dim light. Now one of the tricks to learning to weld, I'll just throw this in, is learning to weld in the dark. Until you strike an arc, you're in the dark. You have to learn to make your own flashlight with the weld. This filters it out and you use it, it just, and by the way, this hood is probably 32 or 3 years old that I've had forever forever. This is my personal hood. It has an adjuster right here. Now I want you to show you how to put it on to where it will fit. Put it on top of your head. Open it up back here. You push and turn. To tighten it, you push and turn it clockwise. It'll snug up. Now you might notice I got a little flap on mine. Yours probably won't have that because when I worked in the machining business, machine shop, we had a lot of splatter and stuff with big mix, so that's the reason. And when we get ready to weld, it goes down with our safety glasses on. I'm about to, be, I got my glasses on. We'll say these are safety glasses. Now, what else? There's another piece we have to keep on our face at all times at this point. We must put our mask on. Let me stop and say something that's not going to be easy because you're going to be breathing and you're hot under this hood. And so we may have a little trouble with our lenses fogging up. Well, all you can do is stop, unfog them and go on till you can see. That's just what we have to do. But anyway, I want to throw that in. That, I guess we could call that part of our personal protective equipment right now. But when I get ready to weld, this hood will go down. See, I cannot see you right now because of the filter lens filters out the ultraviolet rays. There's different shades, and I'll work with you on an individual basis. Some people, if you're a little bit sensitive, we'll get you like a number 11. Most people can get by with a number 10 filter. Uh, me personally, I, a number 10 has always been good for me, but it may not be for you, but we will deal with that individually. Now let's move on a little bit. Our feet. Now I've just brought out an old pair of my old boots, my old work boots. You will have to furnish anything you need, you know, boots, pants, and things that will be your, if you can't, then hey, let us know. We'll see what we can do about getting you some. But these are just old leather, but they're thick soles. You want them thick because if somebody's burning in the shop and they cut a piece of metal in two and it's red hot, it hits the floor, you step on it in thin shoes, guess what? Uh-oh, now I got a big blister on the bottom of my foot. But with good boots on, with good boots, it's usually not a problem. Gloves. Gloves are very important because all this heat and everything is right there, right there at the end of your hand. And as that rod burns down, your hand gets closer and closer down to the heat. By the way, a welding arc is at least 11,000 degrees. That's how it's melting that steel. So we keep gloves on our hands. If you don't, you're going to get burnt. It's that simple. You're going to get burnt because you're dealing with lots of heat there. That's our next item. Next is just an old, look here, an old plaid, cheap Walmart 
100% cotton shirt. You don't want to weld in polyester. I'll show you an example. If you burn a drink bottle, what does that drink bottle do? Does it burn or melt? It melts, of course. Well, polyester in your clothes does the same thing. If you was to happen to spark, get you to burn in a little bit, which can happen in welding, please understand that. Sometimes you just put it out. It's not a big deal. But if you got polyester on, it will melt to your skin. Then you've got a blister. So what I do, I don't go out and spend, oh my goodness, 40 bucks on a Carhartt shirt that I'm going to burn absolutely up probably with time. I just go out to Walmart, find me an old cheap George, 100% cotton shirt. And by the way, you don't have to wear this all day or you're not in welding all day anyway. So a lot of the students, when we get ready to go, we get our, they like to keep clothes hanging in the tool room. Some of them like to leave their boots and get back in their tennis shoes. Hey, I understand that. Yeah, the boots are hot, aren't they? And it's hot right now. So we, that's not a problem. But when you're in the welding shop, you have to be protected from heat and things and i'm showing you exactly how to do that and and that's pretty much it i like to keep a shirt on under these an old t-shirt or something like that and uh, it, it's a it's fun welding is fun it's enjoyable it's something that you'll probably use for the rest of your life once you learn to do it it's just a fun thing but we must be safe at all times while we do it and there's more on safety but for now i just want us to you might want to go out to the store get your mom and dad to listen even boot you know as well as i you can spend 250 dollars or you can spend 50 dollars depends on how much you're going to wear them if you just need some for the welding shop you might just go out to walmart and find you an old cheap pair to wear because they're probably not going to last you past our class time anyway the time we get done you stomp around in hot metal and everything else so i'm gonna let it go at that right now i'll be getting back with you later on more we gotta we'll do some safety on arcs on actual welding on torches everything in welding has its own specific safety concerns we'll say that if you don't protect yourself if you don't watch out and by the way who is responsible for your safety is it me well yes up to a point but i can't protect you as good as you can so you have to be safety minded think about safety think about what you're doing we'll be working we'll be doing things i try to watch sometimes i see everything sometimes i don't if you look out for yourself you'll never have any problems whatsoever and i don't think you will anyway well listen that's all i'm going to say for now thank you i look forward to seeing all of you when we get to meet face to face for now see you